Today, I'm going to share with you an infinite canvas app that you might want to weave into your brainstorming and note taking workflow. It's called Concepts, and I really enjoyed using it. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Verbal to Visual. I am your host, Doug Neal, and I've been experimenting with different types of apps that sketchnoters might want to use, either as a primary note-taking tool, or maybe as a presentation creation tool, or maybe just as a brainstorming and problem-solving tool. And it's more within the last category that I kind of took on the app that I'm sharing today in order to create a big mind map as I was figuring out all of the details surrounding a new podcast that I just launched today. The podcast, like this YouTube channel, is called Verbal to Visual. I've linked to it down below. It also has a YouTube channel that you might want to check out, but you'll get to hear more details about that new podcast as I'm demonstrating this app, Concepts. So let's get into the demo. Here we are from the homepage, creating a new project. I think it's helpful here that it walks you through some preferences early on, identifying whether you're right or left-handed, deciding how you might use your finger in a different way than your Apple Pencil, which is pretty cool. I went with panning the canvas, two finger tap is undo, three finger is redo. We'll come back to that tap and hold one in a bit. And then just getting comfortable with the tools, doing a bit of writing and drawing to get comfortable with the pressure sensitivity, looking at the brushes and tools that are available, including a marketplace where you can purchase more specialized things. And here you see me playing around with what line weight looks like, depending on how zoomed in you are. I like to check to see whether the line weight adjusts with the zoom or it kind of stays consistent no matter what level you're zoomed in. It's nice to see that there are some background options here as well as built-in grids that you can use. I'm a big fan of the dot grid. And here I made sure to turn off the enable canvas rotation feature when using two fingers to zoom in or out because I don't find that canvas rotation helpful for my sketch noting. It's nice to maintain the horizontal and vertical orientation that I start with. But then here I notice this tap and hold feature potentially as a way to activate this lasso tool. I ended up using that quite a bit, as you'll see in the first project that I dug into here. My built-in screen recorder failed me at the very early stages of this particular project, so we'll hop in kind of early on in the creation of a mind map connected to a new podcast that I just launched. I decided to map out the who, what, why, where, and when of that podcast a couple weeks ago as a way to kind of wrap my head around all of the the aspects of getting this thing out into the world. And when I think about what an infinite canvas whiteboard app might be used for, I really like this application of an ever-growing mind map. You can continue branching out into deeper and deeper details, knowing that you're never going to run out of space. I decided to stick with just three colors here, yellow for text, black for imagery, gray as a helper color for containers and connecting lines. And here you see me using the tap and hold to activate the lasso, which allows you to select certain portions of your sketch here and then move it around. I ended up using that feature quite a bit, and I like that I was able to set that particular action with your finger as a way to do that automatically, so I don't have to pull up any tool. And I also liked that it was separate from the use of my Apple Pencil. There's the potential with all of these apps to kind of get a, a back and forth going between whatever hand you're using to hold your stylus and doing all of your mark making with that hand, but then using your other hand and your finger to do more tool switching type tasks. So I found that really came in handy. So here I'm digging into the what section of this new podcast mind map, identifying that it's a podcast featuring one-on-one -on -one coaching calls about sketch 
sketchnoting. And what might have been the most helpful chunk of this mind map was reminding myself all of the different reasons why I decided to start this podcast. One reason is to support the individual person that I'm chatting with. And I think that support takes a handful of forms. Part of it is just about sharing specific sketchnoting tips and ideas related to whatever that person's working on. And more generally, giving folks encouragement to just keep at it and hopefully identifying some specific next steps that they can take. So what I tended to do as I was filling out each of these sections was kind of get each of the pieces for that section sketched out, give each a container, and then kind of move them around to a placing that feels right before I add in those connector lines. Another branch to this why is giving listeners ideas that they can try out too. So my hope is that other sketch noters benefit from these one-on-one -on -one conversations that we're having. And then one of my goals is to continue Continue identifying the common questions that folks have about sketchnoting. Since that is the skill that I teach, I'm always curious to know what questions come up and what I might be able to create to help answer those questions. And I do my best to come up with some helpful answers on the fly, but I also know that in some cases it will take a bit of time and reflection for me to maybe come up with a better answer. And those better listeners might also come from listeners of the podcast. So I think there's a good opportunity for some nice feedback loops to get going in terms of the questions that come up and potential answers to those questions. It was only at this point that I decided to rename my drawing and then hop right back in. I was actually surprised to see how I didn't really lose any momentum or enthusiasm for this tool as I created this mind map. I created this throughout the course of a single day in a handful of 30 minute or 45 minute chunks in between some other tasks. And often I've found that I don't really want to spend that much time within a single day in a given app. But the overall workflow with this one here and probably my excitement for this project led me to not feeling the fatigue that I often feel when sketchnoting in other apps. And I think that's something specific to digital sketchnoting that you don't get with analog sketchnoting, that technology fatigue. So be on the lookout for that yourself and try to find the app that minimizes that technology fatigue for you. As I was identifying the when of this podcast, I set May 21st as the launch date, hoping to get the first three or four episodes out on that day, and then at that point, release one new episode each Tuesday. And as I was thinking about the launch of the podcast, this idea came to mind. Why not use this video about concepts as an opportunity to spread the word about the new podcast? So my hope is that this video serves both of those purposes, gives you a sense for what concepts concepts is like, how you might use it as a mind mapping tool, and also maybe get you interested in the new podcast that I just launched. If you would like to listen to this new show, there are a few places you can do that. Go check out our website, www.verbaltovisual.com. I'm creating a blog post there for each episode to share some limited show notes, probably a paragraph description of the episode and a bullet point list of links to point to resources that come up during the conversation. I'm pretty sure I'll be using the Fusebox podcast player developed by Pat Flynn. And at the end of those blog posts, you'll probably see a rotating call to action. I'll encourage you to check out our online courses about sketchnoting, maybe join the verbal to visual community. If you're new, grab the get started guide and maybe consider rating in and reviewing this show on your podcasting app of choice. But also keep in mind that this podcast will be available on all of the common podcasting platforms, so you can of course listen to the show there as well. That felt like a good stopping point for this mind map. I felt good about how I had identified all of those five pieces and was ready to move forward in the podcast development process. So I decided to try out the export feature. And it's nice that you've got plenty of format options as well as region options. Exporting just the kind of current frame on your screen or the entire drawing. And as far as background goes, making it either transparent 
using the paper that you've got going and even the dot grid. I went with the entire drawing here, which when displayed in this rectangular way might look kind of funky because I wasn't too worried about filling the canvas or the screen in any way that would, you know, avoid excessive white space at the end. Instead, I just followed the ideas and the directions that they were taking me. But I do like how it turned out and it's easy enough for me to kind of pan through it to explore the specific sections and remind myself of the ideas that I had first captured about who this podcast is for and why I'm making it in the first place. So based on that first experience with concepts, I really like this tool, especially for that application that I was demonstrating, creating this large mind map while thinking through a new project. To be able to let that mind map grow as big as it needed to be, that was really helpful. And just how smooth the process was of navigating around that environment using a pretty limited set of drawing tools. I'm sure there are plenty of brush features available there that I did didn't even explore at all. I think I was barely scratching the surface there in terms of exploring all of the things that this app has to offer. But since my main goal was to explore the infinite canvas piece to it, it was helpful to kind of limit the types of brushes that I used. So if you were intrigued by what you saw and want to use that tool yourself, do go check out Concepts. And if you like the sound of our new podcast, I encourage you to go give it a listen too. I've got the first four episodes up, and as you saw in my mind map, I'll be releasing one new episode each Tuesday. It will be available on all major podcast platforms, at least a few of them right now and the others soon, since some are still in the approval process. And I also created a separate YouTube channel just for the Verbal to Visual podcast as a way to be able to share these audio-only conversations on YouTube, but also as a way to use YouTube's premiere feature for a more communal first listen experience when I initially publish each episode on Tuesday afternoon. It's looking like. I've been doing that here with my YouTube videos also, using the premiere function on YouTube to share these at 9 a.m. Pacific time. That's a fun opportunity to watch live with folks, participate in a text chat, and then after that first viewing, it just turns into a normal YouTube video. We'll have a similar setup going on the YouTube channel for the Verbal to Visual podcast. So if you'd like to kind of join in on those premieres each Tuesday, do go subscribe there. And one bonus of that YouTube channel, even though there won't be videos like these associated with them, I will, whenever possible, uh, share the, the sketch note that's the focus of that conversation as the, the static image that will be there on the YouTube video so that that's there as a reference as you're listening to our conversation. Or if you'd rather just listen in Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, you've got those options as well. I will include links to all of those places down below, so do check that out. And thanks for watching here. I enjoy exploring, sketchnoting, and all sorts of different formats. This YouTube channel is never going away, so we'll keep at it here. Now it's nice to kind of add in some sketchnoting conversations to tap into the audio only format as well. So thanks again for watching, and I look forward to talking to you again in the next one. Till then.